I put up a video recently and it showed uh, why there was a big need for um, Australian farmers and and uh, graziers to to control the population of trees on their property. Uh, that video showed um, woody undergrowth such as that stuff over there in the distance, that, br that brighter green coloured one. It showed scenes of that stuff growing so thickly that it choked out all the native grassland and it not only had choked out the native grassland but it also choked out those bigger shady habitat trees that grew on that grassland and like and the question popped up well could it have been the livestock that killed those bigger shady trees is that what killed it well i've brought you to this part of the property to answer that question right before you you can see there's a dam over there behind that windmill and that windmill picks the water up out of that dam and drops it in that earth tank. There's a tank there built out of earth and uh, holds it full of water. And from there, the water siphons into a set of cattle troughs, set of uh, water troughs there. And this water point, that set of troughs, is the only water in this part of the whole property. This property is about 80,000 acres. And th that water is probably about four... Uh, it waters roughly about 10,000 acres in the dry season of that property. Um, and it is the only water point in that 10,000 acres, so all the livestock, all the cattle, have to come here for a drink. Now, keep that in mind. All the cattle in this whole area of this property have to come to that trough and get a drink every day. So what that means is that this area is one of the most heavily impacted areas with livestock in this part on this part of the property when they're when they have their drink and go back out to feed again they all spread out everywhere and don't impact the soils and native vegetation so heavily but here they do um, they're not here today because this paddock has been destocked um, the animals are living in another paddock at the moment all the cattle so this one's um, uh, empty that's why there's no cattle here but getting back to the question at hand did the cattle that graze the country kill off the bigger native trees in that last video well there's native trees here these are the gidgee trees these are of the acacia tree variety they're a native australian species and that's predominantly what grows here over there there's those ones those bigger trees uh, with shady trees there, um, eucalypt, those grey coloured ones. So there's both um, eucalypt and acacia trees there growing together in that scene. And they are, like I said before, some of the most heavily impacted by livestock grazing because of that water point, drawing all the animals out of the paddock to this one little area every day and has been happening like that since that water point was put in in the 19, I think it was put in the late 1950s or early 60s, so a long time ago. So every day pretty much since then, um, livestock have been impacting these trees. So the question is, do, the, do cattle kill off these trees? Well, your own eyes can see that those trees are very healthy. Those trees are, and keeping in mind, we've just come through seven years of a really, really nasty drought, really, really bad. Like last year, there wasn't even enough rain out here around this dam. That dam um, can go two years without water running into it, and it went dry. It was, it was had it. So there, and and there was seven years of drought here until this season. It finally broke, and we've. We've uh, got some respite from the drought, but obviously it didn't. The drought didn't even affect those trees with those animals impacting it like that um, on a daily basis. Both the eucalypt and the acacia varieties of trees have not been impacted at all by the heavy livestock grazing of this area. This little open patch here between here and that trough over there in windmill, this was cleared years ago when they put that dam in. They brought the machinery in here and knocked all the patch of scrub away here to give themselves enough room to work and put that dam in but other than that there's been no machinery impact 
but there would be normally lots of cattle over there laying around those trees chewing their cud all this native herbage and grasses and vegetation would be chewed right out of this air their hooves would be churning the soils up on a daily basis um everything that that um a lot of the the um, environmentalist groups teach that cattle do to the soil that's bad they would do it here the cattle would be churning the soils up with the hooves this, this would be a dust bowl around here come the end of the dry season so there's no trees on this property that would get as heavily impacted as around these water points and yet you can see they're flourishing so that should answer the question do livestock kill off the bigger trees in the last video or do they kill off the bigger trees anytime? Well, you can see with your own eyes, heavily impacting groups of livestock on the land do not hurt those trees, even in drought time.